Welcome to Plank of the Week. It's the first one of the year. It's Talk Radio TV. Welcome to the first Plank of the Week of the year. It's 2022, and what better way to start it off by getting two great panellists in uh, for the first show. And it is, of course, Russell Quirk, a man who knows a thing or two about plankery. Uh, and that's the Kraku, or is it Kraku? I've now just learned that your yeah, name Krakow. I've been mispronouncing for the last best part of the last 18 months. Esther Craker is here, and uh, she's not going to be very nice about some people, so just beware, <laughs> be careful. Uh, Russell, why don't you kick us off? Shall I? Happy your first New Blake of the year. Happy New Year to both of you, sorry. Yeah, so my, my apologies. My first one, yeah. um, I, I'm afraid it's a bit of an old favourite, really, um, but I couldn't help myself because oh, it's God. very apt, I think, yeah. uh, which is Sadiq Khan. Yes. Okay, yeah. Now, you will be aware, I'm It's sure amazing, it, isn't it, how oftentimes we've just finished Plank of the Year not yeah. that long ago. He Sadiq could be Khan, Plank of the Year for this well, year. he I, figured very high in the Plank of the Year. Unsurprisingly. Um, and, and he didn't worthy. quite win it because, of course, we know who did. We'll come to that later. Yeah, yeah. So, look, he, he's a worthy winner. Uh, some would argue he should be on it every week. But, of course, in the run-up to Christmas, <laughs> and New Year, uh, and what would normally be firework celebrations for London, as, yes. uh, as we've been mm. used to. Mm. Um, first of all, Sadiq Khan decided to cancel them, uh, yeah. much to the disdain of the media and basically every Londoner, right. um, on the basis of Omicron, right. even though fireworks, the last time I looked, were an outside no, but did he not cancel yeah. it way before Omicron? October. He cancelled he yeah. it before anybody really yeah, knew anything about Omicron. It, it was October, yeah. so maybe yeah. he knew something we didn't. But right. um, Anyway, so cancelled them, and then lo and behold, on New Year's Eve itself, there's an announcement by him, by the mayoral office, yeah. that they are on after all. Yeah. So you think, oh, OK, fine, at least they're on, mm -hmm. you know, kind of begrudgingly. Yeah. But then the next statement that comes out of City Hall is they're on, but you can't watch yeah. them live. Yeah. You're not allowed but to come But this is what they did You're last year. Banned but they did London. the same thing you can last year. watch it on TV, that's what he that's said. Yeah. Yeah. But they did the same thing last year because except this year, they did actually say they were on before Christmas Eve. They, they admitted that. Yeah. But they kind of were very vague about what they were going to be like. Yeah, yeah. And what they did the previous year was they just said, there aren't any fireworks, right? So nobody was allowed out. They had police, I think, monitoring the riverbank to make sure nobody was kind of, you know, hanging around there. And I remember watching, you know, whatever it was, Jules Holland or something, you know, slipping off into the night, waking up the next morning going, hang on, there was a firework were, display because yeah. they did have one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they didn't tell anyone. Yeah. So so there, there's, I've got a criticism about the firework display itself because it wasn't yeah. very impressive as far as I It was awful. Saying. There's a load of drones. Mm. And, of course, because it's it so it was also politicised. Oh, yeah. So you remember the year before last mm. where it was all about the European flag yeah, yeah. and how lovely the EU are and so right. on. Um, well, of course, Sadiq Khan this time gets a reference into Black Lives Matter yeah. and oh, taking, nice. the, taking knee and so the knee. Completely the unnecessary. The brave footballers. Completely unnecessarily. Yeah. And there was supposed to be a live appearance by, I think, Ariana Grande and Elton John. Yeah. Well, I watched it live and there was no appearance. Did they not record something? Really? Well, there, there was a little bit of music from the pair of them, but yeah. there certainly wasn't some I'm stage with Elton John and Ari on the ground. Out. Well, I don't think they were there. Yeah. But I think exactly. there, was there not some poem as well? There was a guy. Yes, there was. Guy there was on Millennium poem. on the Millennium Bridge. Yeah, yeah. yeah who was and I, it's some woke old guy. <laughs> it was that's rubbish. Yeah. It was rubbish. So, so, so Zeke Khan mm. cancels them. Yeah. Outrageous. And basically lies because he must have known damn well months and months right. beforehand yeah. that he was really going to. But put you know them what on. the other thing was that they did. They also they then had different venues so that if you yes. did want to try and go and see what was going on. They started in Greenwich. Yep. Then they had some drone stuff somewhere else. There was some stuff then they forms. had the Millennium Bridge, and Actually. they had, there were all these different places. So you yeah. couldn't, you actually, couldn't actually stand. Congregate and you couldn't watch, stand yeah. in one place. And there was some here, of course, at the Shard. One was next it? to us here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so it was underwhelming. But he fibbed about it in the first place. Con I London. I think he wanted to have a hero moment. What, like, I, I cancelled them to then. Do you, know, you know what I think it is? It's because he can. He mm. did. Mm. So yeah. under the cover of some. Covid kind of excuse. He decides to cancel them. Then he decides, no, you can have them again, like some Marie Antoinette. Yeah, like I'm in charge of your yeah. life. But yeah. then says, but you can't come and see them. You have to watch them on telly. And I tell you something. I bet he didn't watch them on telly. I bet he was there somewhere, somewhere. with his some mates and his family watching. Them. Overlooking the. But you river. know the thing is, this Covid, this whole pandemic has given rise to the mini like. I don't want to call them Hitlers, but Napoleons. mini, like, yeah, mini Napoleons, Napoleons, exactly. Yeah. Look at Drakeford, look at Sturgeon, yeah. look at the city con, who couldn't yeah. even be more irrelevant. Like, first of all, London is broke. Yeah. The city's bankrupt. Yeah, so I'm presumably we paid again for these, right? Exactly. I'm not surprised they were they were not great. TfL has no money, and and the, the quality of the service shows. I mean, these people politically are as irrelevant as they could be, yeah. but this pandemic has been a saving grace for them. Oh. And and I will get to one of them. But then he couldn't help well, himself. We may get to we may get to more than one of them. I I know. But he still Usually. made it political. Yeah. He couldn't help himself. No, he still made it political. He's also come out this uh, this week and said that he wants to somehow decriminalise marijuana, I saw which that. you might go along with. You might mm -hmm. go okay. Sounds like a good idea. I mean, it pretty much is already decriminalised. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I can't walk anywhere around or even drive anywhere without smelling it. Yeah. You know, there's people smoking all over the place. It's already pretty much decriminalised. But 
here's his brilliant genius idea. He's going to decriminalise it in three boroughs of London. <laughs> now, I don't know which ones he's going to... I imagine, going to guarantee there, so. <laughs> Can you imagine? Shoreditch will be one of well, them. Well, funnily enough, Shoreditch, they were police were out in, in force the other night in Shoreditch. Drug testing, weren't they? Drug testing, yeah. swabbing people. We, but I don't understand what they were doing because they must have been asking people, do you mind if we swab your hands? Honestly, I just to think... To see that whether you've got any drugs on them. The waste of police resources is just becoming incredible. I know. Esther, who's your first nominee? So my first nominee is a bit personal. Um, yesterday I was coming from filming um, a show and I had an Addison Lee taxi book. Oh, yeah. So I get in the taxi. This taxi has a plastic visor. It's like a divider. Yes. And the taxi driver himself is wearing a mask. Right. And he says, do you have a mask? I was like, no, I don't have a mask. So I, got, I was like, I'm exempt. I exempted myself, right. actually. But on I political just, grounds. Yeah, on political <laughs> grounds. But well, I am can, exempt. Well, you can exempt yourself yeah. on any sorts of grounds. And nobody can ask you what... Exactly. It affects my mental for. health. It yeah. traumatises me. You could be anxious. Anyway, and I tried to set this mind's mind, man's mind at ease. And I showed him, like, my COVID pass and everything. Yeah. And I'm like, look, I've had the crap. Just take me home. Yeah. And he's like... This thing is serious. You may not take it seriously. I can't take you anywhere. And I just thought, hang on, I'm being lectured about the dangers of COVID by a London taxi yeah. driver. And so when I was like, fine, I'm, I didn't like cause you know, I just, I, f I figured he had a bad day. Right. So I got off and I just, I went back into the building and I said, you know, if you had such a problem, if you were so scared of COVID, yeah. you're a taxi driver in London. Yeah. The only way you could be more exposed to COVID is if you were probably working for the NHS. Yes. Why don't you go and pick fruit in Kent? Mm. You'd probably make the same amount of money probably. and you'd be away from all the COVID. Also, if the, if the cab company hasn't told you that their rule is you must wear a, a mask, a yeah. face covering, mm. um, then they, he's not entitled to do that anyway. But exactly. And I, I'm not, sorry, I don't have to reveal my medical status and say I'm exempt because this is that. No. And he was like, you, you need well, the law says, as Mark says, you don't have to do no. that. Exactly. Well, you no, need no, documentation the, the law actually and all of goes that. the other way. It's says you can't ask people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, so what was the point in the screen, the plastic screen between you and the driver? This is the thing, and the window was open. I'm like, you couldn't, you have probably put yourself more in danger sitting here and arguing with me than just if you had taken me home and I'd be quiet and I'd just ignore you. Yeah. Um, but the reason why he is my plank is because he's part of a bigger problem, which is COVID hysteria. Yes. And these people that really cannot fathom actually getting on with the heat. I, I'm assuming he's trying to get on with his life because he's actually turned up at work right. to pick up people all over London, the yeah. COVID capital of the UK. But despite the fact that uh, London is the COVID capital of the UK and everybody pretty much has probably either had it, had it or... or is about to get it, yeah. um, he thinks wearing a mask is going to stop that. Yeah, exactly. London, London cases, and I hate, hate to be London-centric again, but London cases are dropping. Yeah, yeah. Speak. yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, but I just... I just think it's like you see this all the time. You see people sitting in their cars driving by themselves with masks. Yeah. People outside walking their dogs with masks. Yeah. People on their own. scared of COVID but decide to work. I, tell you, I haven't yet seen a dog with a mask on, but I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Children, two year olds with right. masks on. That probably happened in Scotland. I probably. Think, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, and yeah, he is my plank because he is part, he is symptomatic of a bigger problem, yes. which is one. And I've said this from the beginning, we're two years on from this, this nightmare pandemic and we've not had an adult conversation about what living with COVID looks like. Yeah, and also I was talking to somebody at the weekend about how we've literally had everything that was ever said about this uh, pandemic mm -hmm. contradicted by the same people that said it in the yeah, first exactly. place. So everything yeah. they said has turned on itself a couple of times. You know, yeah. at the beginning, masks were not a good idea. Mm -hmm. I remember when the first uh, lockdown happened, I used to go to the supermarket and nobody was wearing a mask. Mm. And now they say, well, you should wear a mask well, in the supermarket. Sadiq yeah. Carnacle said you can't catch COVID on the tube. Well, that's what yeah. he said. And he was wrong about that. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing, you know, and now the schools are, are, are being told we must wear, wear a mask, mask in class. And now also, they're also taking it too far. And in my view, illegally taking it too far by saying uh, in lots of letters that I've seen to parents, um, if you do not have a pe proper medical exemption, your child will have to wear a mask in class yeah. all day. For seven hours, hours. even this though it's guidance, which is not bonkers, yeah. and none of the schools have been told to do this. Yeah. It's simply them affecting uh, the teaching union's wishes yeah. because yeah. the teaching union is saying, are and, not then mandated. and their excuse is, "Oh, um, well, we want to keep the schools open because masks keep the schools open." Really? Yeah. I mean, every country in Europe that has used masks more than us has got bigger numbers of cases. Yeah. You know, if everyone in this country who's been wearing a mask thinks that somehow you know, we've improved our situation, then how come so many people have, one, died, yeah. and two, and, and got it, it? And it makes no sense, because if you saw, um, it was on uh, Talk Radio yesterday, Nadeem mm. Sahawi trying to justify why mm. kids should be wearing masks. masks. Yeah. He, he struggled. Yeah. I mean, he really struggled. But this is the demographic well, that's least... Because he doesn't have any evidence. Least, that's least... why he struggled. Well, that's what he was asked for. Well, he couldn't that, present it. That, that does 
Yeah. But, but then also, why are teachers not compelled, inverted commas, to wear masks? They're not, are they? Why Why is it different in the workspace? Mm. I mean, it's crazy. But it makes why no sense. kids? They're the people that are, like, we should be thankful that this virus least affects children. They're the least vulnerable, right? Exactly. So mm. why kids? Why? But I also, don't why think... are they frightening these children? They're the so heartless. You must wear these, otherwise you, you, you might die. Mm. Exactly. They're heartless people. Mm. I think these people have no sympathy for all the crap that children have had to deal with during this pandemic. I mean, for two years, these kids have literally, like, not seen like normal facial yeah. expressions of people that they, they're around because they're, they're being forced to wear these muzzles mm. all the time. It's just heartless. It makes me so angry. I know. It really is ridiculous. The whole mask thing is mad. Oh, but let me it. do you my first one. It's a civil service for me because the civil service, mm. um, which covers a multitude of sins, literally, <laughs> but is mostly about this whole kind of, you know, pandemic that we face. Oh, We've yeah. got a million people apparently, you know, locked away in their homes that are self-isolating because they've got COVID, supposedly. Mm. Yeah. They may or may not have COVID. I don't know. Might just but I'm pretty sure off. that mm. Uh, some people have decided to ring up the boss and go, oh, my test has just come back and it's positive. I won't be in for the next week. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of that going on. But the civil service we have discovered today have actually issued a dictum to all of their employees. And this is everything from, you know, the home office to the foreign office to, you know, DVLA, passport office. If you wish to uh, um, absent yourself with a medical certificate that you do yourself, mm. you can stay off work till January the 25th. So they can actually stay off work. On full pay. Huh. On full pay. Well, it's funny how all the industries that some of them have suffering from a shortage of workers mm. yeah. are in the public sector. Yeah, well, you're going to get paid anyway. Sick pay. Yeah. You know, train drivers, the, the NHS, school teachers, all these people who get very well looked after if they're sick. Yeah. Unlike those of us who don't get paid if they don't work. Well, they're bound okay. to opt to take the time off, aren't they? Well, if yeah. you can take off until the 25th of January, instead of you doing some horrible paper-pushing job that mm. you can do from home anyway. You would do it. You'd just do it, wouldn't you? But this is the thing. I mean, it's, it's the same with the Madness. NHS shortages, yeah. right? And this whole this call for um, Boris to address the situation. How do you expect him to address the situation? You get people to isolate for 10 days, yeah. right? There is no... I mean, staffing during a pandemic is very difficult mm. because people are not as mobile. How are you going to recruit nurses from the Philippines if they can't bloody get here? Right. Right? And the, the whole thing is such a joke to the extent that we can't even, like, you know we're having staffing issues. You know you shouldn't be letting people get off sick, especially when they don't have, like, symptoms or right. anything like that. But the bigger question is, how do you expect people to plan? Right. We, have, we don't know what living with COVID looks like. Even mm. if we said, okay, you must do a lateral flow test every two weeks or whatever, there is literally, I mean, we don't even know what this country is going to look like between now and June. But this is how what we have a government for, isn't it? Isn't this what we have a government for, where we have the government actually saying, look, these are the regulations, these are the rules. Yeah. We had a guy ring in today to the show, right, who gave it all away. He was a train driver. He said he, he felt a bit, he didn't even feel bad. He had a cough. Mm. So he rung, he rung, I don't know why he did it. He said he rang 119 which is the sort of, you know, the NHS helpline. Mm. And they said, oh, you better go home, uh, get away from work and uh, get yourself a PCR test and don't leave until it comes back negative. negative yeah. So, of course, he's then off work for two days, yeah. gets the PCR test finally back, and he was negative. Well, assuming he's honest about that. Yeah. Well, and I said yeah. to him, yeah, and I said to him, what did you bring 119 for? He said, well, that was my idea. It was a bit stupid, really. I was like, well, yeah. Why didn't you just, if you, I mean, if you're particularly worried, take a lateral flow test, test, and if yeah. it's negative... Go back go, to go where you were. So, yeah. so why do we mollycoddle our public sector quite as much as we do? Because you know, the oh, unions demand it. Yeah. yeah, that's everywhere. But, but, because the, the, the unions demand But look where that got us back in the 70s. Not very far. I mean, but it feels like we're back in the 70s. Well, well, and, and actually... Bin the, collectors, you know, yeah. bin collectors and, and, not But if you look on. now at the public sector, the public sector earn more than the private sector. There's about a 7% right. gap now. It always used to be the other way around. Yeah. Go yeah. to the private sector to earn more. It's not true anymore. Well, the public sector used to be good because you'd go, you'd earn less money, but you'd have a much better pension and you would retire earlier. Yeah. But they also have more sick days, more sick days as we've just rehearsed no yeah, one so you get paid more you get more time off it just makes no sense and the thing is that seven percent difference is actually skewed by the people at the top so the the nhs sort of managers and administrators that are not actually health the, professionals that six that are figure making brigade. six figures yeah. you know i mean we're going to talk about the the um honor system soon but all these people that are not really that really shouldn't be getting the kind of no. money that they are that are getting that money so that that's probably the disparity because if you look at it you wouldn't say a nurse in a private hospital is, is worse is or worse off than a nurse working in the NHS right and the same for dentists and it's all, it's just the people at the top mm. and their wages are get, keep getting inflated and yeah. the people at the bottom their wages are stagnated i mean right. the NHS workers got what 2% pay rise that's below inflation yeah. they're worse off but don't worry if you're on 200,000 that's not a bad little chunk of change well, exactly. 2% of that well, yeah. also they happen to be the people that are driving the government to make decisions around 
COVID restrictions, restrictions lockdown exactly. and so on. Yeah. And those people themselves, as you alluded to just now, have nothing to lose whatsoever. Yeah. Exactly. So if we lock down for 12 months, the likes of Witty, Valance and Van Tam, doesn't matter right. an iota to yeah. those individuals right. whatsoever. But if you're an employer, someone that has to pay wages, pay the VAT, worry about your Make stock money. going yeah. bad and so Make on. Make actual yeah. money. It really does matter. Yeah. And, that, and that, of course, has been forgotten about I mean, completely. well, nobody in government knows anything about making money. No. Well, they know about yeah. spending it. Mm. This know. is the thing. They'll spending take it from you and I money. and Esther and they'll go, yeah, bring, us, bring us all your money, we'll go and spend it over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the I people mean, that right. have literally run this country over the last 18 months have no understanding of business or the economy. Run it into the ground. Exactly. These, science, these scientists coming up with all these doomsday models. Yeah, yeah. Like, Thank you. However, we need to have a balanced opinion yeah. about this because we have an economy to run and these models yeah. that you're predicting. Also, I don't want somebody like Chris Whitty standing there going, we have to be cautious. Well, sorry, your life of caution has led yeah. you to be this man, yeah. right? I don't want to be you. Exactly. You know, you are a very Unremarkable. odd man indeed. <laughs> slightly, un, uh, well, slightly unrealistic character. Can I mention at this juncture Dr. Frank Atherton? Yes. The, uh, the, the, whale, so the Welsh chief medical officer oh, yeah. who literally three or four days Sounds ago... Sounds like a footballer. Yeah, yeah. Well, and of course he's now, I know you're going to come on to this, Esther, but he's now Sir Dr. Frank Atherton. Oh, is he? The other way around, Dr. Sir Frank Atherton. I don't know how that works. I don't know. Well, all, all of these civil servants, they're going to have to worry Sir. about this. They're going to have to worry about the, uh, the correct... How did he get a knighthood? Well, he's got a knighthood, um, and I'm sure it's not because of this, but despite saying, not three or four days ago, right. that if you now come down with a cold, you should self-isolate. I mean, what a nutty... How do you know if it's a cold? Yeah, there isn't a test for that. Thing to say. Yeah, exactly. There's no test for that. Basically, what you're saying is a sniffle, a little sore throat, anything, even if you test negative and it's just a cold, yeah. you should self-isolate to protect everybody else around you. But this is how confusing it is, right? Because in some schools, they say if your child has got a cold, they should still come into school. Or else we'll mark them well, down. Have you but, how do we, but how do we build up any immunisation yeah. as a population if we lock ourselves away the, t the moment we get And we'll just, we just keep getting jabbed. I mean, it's, how are we going to drink water? We're just going to have all these holes coming out of our body that we're not going to be able to drink anything, <laughs> right? I, but, that is quite a funny uh, idea, isn't it? You put, it's it's just crazy. Just pouring out your arm. Fourth, fifth, I mean, Israel has, what, passed Israel's fourth going to jabs. Fourth, yeah. Turkey is going to the fifth jabs. I mean, at some point, these jabs are going to be counterproductive. And that's well, what you really irritates so. me. You would think so. Uh, are we moving seamlessly towards an NHS nomination? This is a really nice link. Thank you very much. You um, yeah, so my second Planck nomination <laughs> is the uh, is the the NHS, but in particular NHS senior management. management yeah. So not the rank and file, but the senior management. So as we sit here talking, 14 National Health Service trusts have declared so-called crises, emergencies, where they've said that officially they cannot cope. But now, that takes us back to Sadiq Khan, isn't it? Because yeah. he declared an emergency in London. In London, yeah. Um, which wasn't an emergency. Yeah. I mean, they need a new dictionary. These so, so my question there in Where that are these vein, trusts, if you don't mind me asking? Where are they, like, concentrated? Are they all over no, England? No, no, or? they're all over the place. Not specifically just London. They're, they're kind of everywhere. Um, and, of course, this will become even more endemic now. So mm -hmm. I suspect over the next 24, 48 hours, almost all NHS trusts will declare it. Because it then becomes a nice backstory, doesn't it? It's a failure. Yeah. You know, we failed in terms of waiting list increasing. We failed in terms of people sitting outside on trolley that we couldn't get into wards because we declared an emergency. So it's a nice backstory. Um, but, but my question is, how many times have we heard this before? So yeah. forget coronavirus, forget the pandemic. So 2021, 2020, when you look back, as I've done, and you Google NHS crisis, you can find news references, media conversations and hype and, um, and, and kind of scary headlines every year going back to 2008, 2009, 2010, oh, yeah. every single year we have an NHS crisis where we don't have enough staff, we have too many patients, mm -hmm. we don't have enough resources. So, so my question is... Which is the most laughable of all, we yeah. don't have enough resources. How many billion do you get every well, we year? Get, yeah, yeah. The 190 the billion pounds a year. The public spending. Yeah, oh. and, and a national treasure that, of course, we will now, I will now be criticised for criticising because, mm -hmm. of course, it's supposed to be this thing, this fluffy but thing. More people, people, but more and more people moving away from that. I have well, to say. I hope so. Let I me give so. you a statistic. Do you know how many people were off ill with coronavirus, according to NHS England. These are NHS employees, hospital workers, on Boxing Day. God, I'm, I'm guessing four or 500,000, probably. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. <laughs> uh, it's 24,632. How many people are employed by the NHS? That's an awful lot of people. Yeah. Well, I'm not it's sure how many. Yeah. I think it's... I think it's hundreds of thousands. It's, it's close probably to hundreds of thousands. It's the second biggest organisation well, I heard. I heard, I don't know if this is right, I heard it's close to a million. Yeah. And it's the second largest employer on the planet. Yeah. But but if we know that every year, mm. because of whatever, because of people slipping on pavements because it's icy or flu or whatever it might be, there's a crisis. Yeah. Why is it 
given all the money that goes into the NHS, that we haven't, at governmental level or NHS management level, been, a, been able to solve the problem of an NHS crisis every single thing. year. Because no politician has involved to try, and, to try and reform the NHS. 1.3 million. Is yeah, one point three, Yeah, because I knew it was a, it was a ridiculous but, but number. Course, I think it's only behind you, Walmart. But Esther, as soon as you talk about reforming the NHS, you get people on the left saying, oh, you want to privatise it. Yeah. No, no, I don't want to privatise it. I'd like the NHS to think about running with work. a private sector mentality, yeah. frankly. But this is the thing, it, because every time we talk about reforming the NHS, it just goes to, oh, you want to be like mm. America. Well, the American healthcare system isn't that bad. And two, if you look at how much taxes you pay towards it, it's yeah. probably the same as you would pay to get a decent health insurance It actually is. As I US. did this uh, mathematical equation, I think, the other week. You pay about 20% of your income tax to the NHS, right? Yeah. So Explicit. if you take that specifically as, say, the average income of an average person in the country, you know, you would be able to get health insurance for that. Yeah. yeah. You know, it would be about the same kind of premium. So, and also, I'm mean, sick to death of hearing these people go, but it's free. It's not free. It's not free. You're free. paying for it. And yeah, the it's thing only is, free. It's Europe. only free if you're unemployed yeah. and therefore you don't put anything in. But if it yeah. was an insurance-based system, there'd be more accountability yeah. as well. Because well, you can go to your well, insurance company and say, hang on. Say, I mean, you, you know, in terms of the, 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 the numbers now, waiting lists are the highest They've ever been. Been. They're they're six, they're getting worse. Six well. million people. Six million people five. on waiting lists. Thirty-five percent of people are waiting over twelve months. I had a doctor today. I, I had me. to wait over eighteen months for mine. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, by the time you've waited that length of time for some people, they have, they're not alive anymore. Yeah. It's yeah. literally like you know, I'm not being funny, but they're not around. Yeah. A doctor to me uh, to, today told me that this waiting list is going to go on for five to ten years. So you could turn up and get some... But the some thing is... I bet it doesn't get any better all, five years all, over Europe, all over Europe, right, we, like, they pay. So they go and see a GP or, or something, and they pay and they get reimbursed. Mm. That's the standard all, 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 over all of Europe. And the, but, the, but if you look at the numbers, right, the NHS actually per person spends about £83 pounds per person. Yeah. In, in Europe, in Germany, I think it's like £142. Yeah. Pounds if you sort of... Right. And in, in Switzerland, it's like £145 pounds per head. Yeah. So they actually spend... So our system is more efficient. Yes. But it's just... We just spend so much. So if you look at it in, in comparison to those other systems, th we actually a pretty efficient system in terms yeah. of spending. Does it look but that, like But it spending does, does not... <laughs> does it feel like... Yeah, no. but no. spending does not equal no. quality. No. Right? Because the quality of healthcare in France, for instance, is far better, but mm. they spend a lot more per head. Yeah. And the structure of the system means that people actually have a more proactive approach to their own health as right. opposed to a reactive approach. That's mm -hmm. my main criticism and, and of the our NHS. Our political answer, though, always, whenever you get the shadow health secretary on the mm. telly or on talk radio uh, or the health secretary, it always comes down to money. And it isn't just about no, money. Course, it's yeah. about efficiency. No. It's about culture. There's, it's about management. Whole, it's about whole swathes of organisation. Most of the people paid no in the NHS to, are not medical professionals. Yeah, but no one ever wants to tackle it because it's seen as though you're criticising the, 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 the treasure, yeah. the mm. nationalist We've got to get away from that. Yeah. And start, How dare start you say properly. that, you know, it takes 12 hours to get an ambulance. Well, actually, it does take 12 hours yeah. to get an ambulance. Yeah. Yeah. Fix it. Yeah. How hard can that be to fix? Yeah. Yeah. You know, just make it more efficient. Your second nominee? My second nominee is, very fitting, Nicola Sturgeon. Nicola Sturgeon. Uh, now, I don't know if you've seen the video of the pensioners in the pub that were... <laughs> I have. <laughs> Had a lovely visit from six it 20 it, it, police officers. It took officers. me back to my days in Scotland where some of the worst pubs I've ever been in exist. Really? Because they don't really know how to do pubs in Scotland. Very Are you well. serious? Yeah, I mean, Edinburgh's got some nice pubs. Yeah. But apart from Glasgow, the pub's are dreadful. Until 1977, women really? still weren't allowed in them, I don't think. 77? Yeah. Well, proper sawdust on the yeah, floor. Yeah, sawdust on the floor. That's and they've still, and you'll find, a lot of them have got blacked out windows. Yeah. Because in the bylaws when they were put together, um, nobody was allowed to look in. Why? Because what were they, they doing were all getting so drunk. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think that's all they were doing. Um, no, I think that was all they were doing. If you haven't been in Glasgow, you won't get it, but that's all they do. Did you say falling in love? No, falling in bout. Oh, OK. Not falling in love. They just well, drink. No, they're in, they're in love with drink. OK. I can say that because I worked in Glasgow and I am indeed Scottish, so before you start piling the complaints in... You know, they do like That's to drink very weird. I mean, I've never been, but... Um, it kind of life expectancy is late 50s or something. Always yeah. Well, I mean, Nicola Sturgeon's, own, I think Nicola Sturgeon's own constituency has the worst drug and drink problem in Europe. In Europe. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And in terms of early death. Well, I mean, this is very fitting because this was actually in Glasgow. Yeah, there you so go. So we had, I think, a team, a, a team, a group of six, five, six pensioners just yeah. having a drink in a pub. And they were... Just... A drum <laughs> What is that? <laughs> it's like a liqueur. Oh, there's so much. I, I, you there's have to so learn. much I don't like. I literally, honestly, you need to take a trip to Glasgow. I I, accents yeah. north of Sheffield, I don't understand. Okay, um, but anyway, and they were descended upon by twenty police officers, twenty six loads of van. vans, right? On, on like during the holiday period, yeah. and I just think, do you have that many resources to expend on right. a group of pensioners? Mm. Anyway, and the, the the video. What was their crime? Um, apparently they weren't wearing a mask. And the thing, I think the, the pub was targeted because right. it said all people are welcome, right. regardless of whether you're vaccinated, unvaccinated, <laughs> masked or not. What's wrong with you? I know. <laughs> you know, it's an inclusive pub. 
mob. You know, you think the leftists would be all over it, but um, so they were descended upon about um, because of that. But the video is so graphic. It's just literally this one guy being tackled to the ground by the police. What, a pensioner. Yes, a pen it was a group of pensioners. They were like in their sixties, and being forced to wear a mask and being told um, not to dance because I think one of them was dancing yeah. or something like that. And it's just, You're not allowed to sing, not allowed to dance, can't do any of that. Can't, can't live life. And there's another video of these women that travelled from Glasgow to another part of Scotland because of the regulations in, in Glasgow. But this is all Nicola Sturgeon's fault because she has set the tone. And this is what I was saying. The COVID has given these politicians relevance mm. because actually, if you think about it, there was, a, there was a survey done in October just last year of the kind of support for Scottish independence. And it's still, the numbers haven't changed very much. It's still 45%, for 48% against. So really, if she was to harp on about it, which she was doing a couple of years before, there'd be no momentum mm. for Scottish independence. So really, this has given her relevance. And this is that she's created this hysteria around people being scared of COVID, not going out, not enjoying sort of Hogmanay or all mm. these things that Scottish people are all about. Well, you make your population dependent on the state. And then the, exactly. state, the state then comes along miraculously with the answer, which exactly. is exactly what Nicola Sturgeon's approach is. But it? people were blaming Blair for obviously being able to give these devolved powers such authority. But I just thought, actually, Boris, and this is over, an oversight, I believe, mm. of his, he should have set the tone and said, this is a national yeah. emergency, COVID. The devolved power shouldn't get a say right. because you don't get to bankrupt your local economies and then expect Westminster they to expect pick up the tab. Pay. Yeah, no, exactly. fact, you're absolutely right. I think that was a massive error to allow each of the different health um, secretaries, for want of a better word, yeah. to dictate to what thing. happened. The devolved because power shouldn't have Because we've seen what's happened say. in Wales, we've seen what's happened um, in Scotland, and I'm going to come on to Wales in a minute, because, you know, they shouldn't be able to have different rules, yeah. you know, because they're not exactly different countries. I mean, no doubt now, all the independence for, for Wales and independence for Scotland, oh, different countries, of course they are. Well, they're not. Mm. Yeah. They're in the British Isles, uh, and basically, at the end of the day, you don't need to have different health policies. Also so and they've, so, I mean, Scotland now looks ludicrous because of the, all the lockdown rules that they've brought in. Yeah. Because one, they've still got higher cases in England. And two, everybody in England saying, well, this is on the way out. Well, they've it? got higher cases than England, but actually they've only got one, one person, person. Got one who person. was in intensive care yeah. for yeah. Omicron. Only right. one. And, and then, of course, the other ludicrous thing was New Year's Eve, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. So loads of people that were anywhere near the southern border of Scotland just drove over the pool and went yeah. out. To New Newcastle. Yeah, but apparently Blackpool was rammed as yeah, well. Berwick on Tweed, to, yeah, Berwick-on-Tweed, Carlisle yeah. and yeah. so on. Absolutely rammed. Yeah, yeah. I know. But, but it's just ridiculous. Yeah. I, I genuinely believe that these the devolved power shouldn't have been going to say all COVID. Right. And I think, again... Because the, co the COVID, the Special Powers Act that was granted because of COVID yeah. should have stipulated that this is a national emergency and yeah. therefore the devolved power. I mean, it doesn't have really much of an effect. No. Uh, per 100,000, Wales and Northern Ireland still have higher cases mm. than England. Yeah. So really, it hasn't really done much other than bankrupt their local economies, no. which we're going to have to pay for. Exactly. And we don't get any say and there's no accountability. No. That's the, the most frustrating part of it all. And I'm going to move on to Mark Drakeford just to make it uh, very uh, Even. Sort of seamless. right? <laughs> because, I mean, you go through all of the crazy things that he did over, over time. Mm. including um, saying to people they could only buy essential things in shops. You remember yeah. the pictures yeah. of them, like, sort of closing off entire yeah, yeah, yeah. areas of the shopping shops, yeah. that you couldn't buy? One, a of the things, over what was essential. one of the things was uh, newspapers and magazines. That was apparently not essential to read in Wales. Yeah. Um, so that was done. You know, clothing was non-essential. Yeah. I think underwear was non-essential. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what Wales is like, but I mean... But I birthday cards were okay. Yeah. Birthday cards yeah. were okay. It was very weird. Yeah. Anyway, his latest sort of, you know, pronouncement, which was before, probably made before Christmas, actually, was when um, they banned people watching... Uh, sporting events, but so they said if you were going to watch a rugby match, which yeah. of course is huge there, um, I think you could take as many as 50 people and watch a rugby match. But what you couldn't do um, was run uh, in some, they cancelled some running uh, competition, right? Uh, which is something that people have been doing for years and years, raising outdoors, money for charity. Outdoors, keeps you fit. Outdoors, keeps you fit, banned that. Mm. Um, but then they said if you want to watch a rugby match inside a pub, you can have 140 people. So you can actually watch it inside. Indoors. Yeah. Indoors, yeah. in a pub. <laughs> and be more with, exposed. With more than 100 people. Mm. But if you're actually watching it live outside... Yeah. You're restricted to 50. You're restricted to 50. Yeah. And you just go, well, that pretty much is the cherry on the cake, isn't it? Yeah. That's yeah. ridiculous. And you yeah. know the thing is, I, I don't think you realise this, this flies in the face of the BLM protests that we're allowed to go through at the peak of this pandemic mm. in, in summer 2020, um, yeah. 2020. Because you had tens of thousands of people outside congregating. Yeah. Apparently, f um, you know... Expressing outrage police. about about an event that didn't even happen on British yeah, soil, right. yelling "Don't shoot at police carrying batons." Yeah, right. But that was that was fine. But you had significantly less. I mean, like one percent of of those people. Mm. 
gathering to watch a sports match outside, but they weren't allowed to do that. But then you can get 140 yeah. people in a pub in enclosed areas where they're likely to spread the virus. They're yeah. drinking, they're socialized. I mean, honestly, the, the, the yeah, amount no, of the, comments... It's, it's either one or the other, isn't it? Yeah. These I guys mean, are just drunk on power. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly the left. They love it. Yeah. You know, left, left is fashion. But they're just, like I said, they're just making it up as they go along. Yeah. I mean, like when they talk, start talking about maybe we should go back to the rule of six, we already know the rule of six is a work. completely arbitrary <laughs> number. Yeah. Just exactly. They just went... Should it be six or should it be eight? Like, raise your hands. And they did a cabinet uh, sort of vote and yeah. they all went with six, but they didn't know why. Yeah. It didn't make any difference. But the, the, the cognitive dissonance is incredible to me. Like, mm. they just... And, God, I, I don't even know. So you can have ten tables of six, mm. but not one table of ten. Yeah. But this is why they don't want to move on from huh? the pandemic. Because then we have to go back to normal life. <laughs> And then we have to because even, everyone's like, forgotten how to have a normal life. Exactly, but well, then they, they all the, the inquiries will start gives up coming power, out. They never get it back, do they? Well, so, yeah, um, but, that, that's I, sure that's but what happen. makes me sad is, and this just shows the decline of the Labour Party. I tweeted something relatively positive about Blair and almost got disintegrated on Twitter for it. But these people that are and the SNP people that are supposed to be caring about the working class, about the average working man, don't care that they're completely destroying people's livelihoods. The SNP don't care about the over, class. well, they don't care about anyone really. But these are people that are meant to be the voice of the working class and the average man, and they don't care because they're trying to score political points mm. to make their careers more relevant. And that's not the conversation Well, do you know what? I can't remember. So Keir Starmer, this, this week, today, when we're filming this, uh, actually made another speech setting out his vision for the future of Britain, mm. which I think is about the 58th time he's done that. Um, still not really very interesting. Right. We don't really know what Well, you can't define is. what a woman is, so He still can't define what a woman is, so, I mean, he's vision. obviously got a problem there. Bad news for Mrs Starmer, obviously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the bottom line is... The Labour Party doesn't know what it stands for, mm. doesn't represent anything anymore, and they're never going to get elected. I mean, there's absolutely no chance of that happening. Mm. But he, um, of course, before Christmas, when they announced that actually there was... Sorry, after Christmas, when they announced there's going to be no more restrictions on New Year, I can't even remember what he said. I don't think he said anything. <laughs> He's so boring. Yeah, but I don't think he said anything, because all he ever would ever say, normally would say, well, that's fine, but they should have done it earlier. Well, I think it was worse than that. I yeah. think before the restrictions were potentially going to be imposed, Keir Starmer was trying to second-guess to be right, yes. he was saying, so, and so were his shadow cabinet, lots of West Street uh. and so on. There should be harder, faster restrictions. You know, we should think about, you know, potentially locking down and so on. And then actually, 24 to 48 hours later, when the data which we'd already seen, by the way, mm. started to manifest itself as a bit more official. Yeah. The likes of Wes Streeting, Keir Starmer and so on, are saying, well, oh, thank goodness that we didn't go in for those really tough restrictions yeah. because now we can all enjoy Christmas and New Year. You're thinking, hang on a sec, two yeah. days ago you said the opposite. I know, it really so, is. And, and today, the Keir Starmer uh, speech that was interesting for what... Uh, he made an interesting in speech. No, no, it was interesting for the fact that he was talking about how Labour are the, the, the government in waiting. Mm. But when asked by journalists, well, what are your policies? We've waited a long time. He said, well, let's not get too detailed. <laughs> Basically, I'm paraphrasing. Right. But he, he had no answer to what their yeah. policies are. So he's trying to be... But it was be like that. Do you that interview? The only reason I know about it is because I watched it on, a, on a, one of those end-of-year review-type mm. programmes where he's sitting being interviewed by somebody uh, up in the northeast of England where he'd gone. I presume it must have been before a by-election or something. Um, and they'd gone out and done a little vox pop with all the people in the street yeah. to ask about Keir Starmer. And all were relentlessly negative about him. said, we don't really know what he stands for, mm. don't really think we'd, we'd ever vote for him, blah, 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 blah. They come back to Starmer and say, what do you make of that? He said, well, it shows that I'm right when I say that I haven't been able to go out and tell anybody what my message is. That's and you go in... That's, no, not that's not really a, a good, good answer. I don't, I don't <laughs> that know. makes you sound useless. Yeah, yeah. So you've not got cut. So yeah. when, when you say you're right that you're useless, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not really a good defence. You're really right that you can't cut through. I don't yeah. know if I'm allowed to say this, but if I was his wife... We'll soon find out. Well, <laughs> Does his wife work for the NHS? Yeah, well, I think he's mentioned that once or twice. No, yeah. If I was his wife, I kid you not, he'll, he'll get no nookie because he can't define what a woman is. So what no. do you, like, let me touch your birthing regions? What yeah, the so, hell? Do you know, it's not a picture I really want in my mind. No, I mean... Too late. I'm sorry. I just would. I'll just be like, no, you don't know what a woman is. So. Should we just go outside and clap for the NHS instead? Yeah, right. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's do yeah, that. That's um, what they yeah, do. Uh, oh god. Now, before we go any further, I should say that we're going to normally we carry one over from last week because we didn't have last week yeah. because this is the first one of the year. But what I think we can do is carry over the winners of Plank of the Year okay. into this week, which is, of course, you would not be surprised to know Meghan and Harry. Oh wow. Or Harry I'm and Meghan. Winners. Whichever yeah, way. Very, very worthy, worthy winners. winners. They were so far ahead of everybody else. It was literally mm -hmm. like, you know, a one horse race. Yeah. Nobody was anywhere near them. But they are the gift that keep on giving. But they are, they because are, you can are. tell me why they would get in it normally anyway this week. Well, they, they would, yeah. And look, if I didn't have so many here and I've had, I've spent the last 24 hours <laughs> agonizing how to whittle it down to three, frankly, uh, Harry and Meghan would have made it. Yeah. Um, because they've announced to the world, because yeah. they like privacy, mm -hmm. that yeah. they've announced yeah. to the world yes. that their child, Archie, is going to a specific school in California near to where, where they live. Um, and it's notable specifically for the traits that it kind of instilled oh, yeah. into, into children. So bear in mind, Archie's two years old. So such things as ensuring that you are nice, 
uh, mental awareness, yep. uh, and basically all things woke. So this school specialises in everything that is kind of personified by Harry and Meghan's ridiculous Don't they output. teach mindfulness? And yeah, stuff. mindfulness and, you know, just basic sycophancy and um, environmental awareness, sustainability is another right. thing. Um, so, look, it, as if it couldn't get worse and they hadn't already imagine become a caricature of themselves. Imagine right? telling a two-year-old to practice yeah, sustainability. Mindfulness. Yeah, yeah. So they're already caricatures huh? of themselves, but they've gone even further now by saying, yeah, no, we're going to accentuate that, we're going to mm. perpetuate that by now sending our poor Archie. I mean, what sort of kid is he going to turn out I to know. be? Anyway, anyway but yeah. so Harry and Meghan stay in. Good. Um, so this first of May, I think first last year they were actually in it every week. They're never going to be out of it. Yeah, like. I don't They're think I ever did a plank why hard. they weren't. <laughs> so give like, us your third. Uh, so my third is, uh, and I cannot believe that this idiot, uh, who obviously we have talked about before, so he's another kind of re-entry, mm. Justin Trudeau. Yes, yeah, oh, he's not uh, been in it for a while. The Premier of <laughs> Canada. Yeah. Um, so he said this this week, that the unvaccinated mm. in his country are often also misogynistic, and racist. racist yeah. <laughs> now, talk about a sweeping statement. So if yeah. you're unvaccinated, okay, whoever you are, right. you're yeah. probably yeah, a gammon-type, uh, uh, racist, misogynist, yeah. mm. nasty, far-right so type. So you hate everybody, individual. basically, yeah. yeah. And, and he hasn't retracted it. And if it. they'd lived in Britain, they would have voted for Brexit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. yeah so, so Mr. basically Mr. You, are, face, you are... Just I was going to say, um, I know, I've never gone to a party in blackface, have you? He has. But he at, the, at the Couple age of, of 29, a grown man. Couple of times, yeah, yeah. And also, apparently, it wasn't the only time he did it. Oh, yeah, he did it more than once. He did it more than once. I don't know if you saw the interview. He was, um, it was, I think it was in a French news channel, and I, anyone who knows, knows I disdain the Canadian French accent because it's actually painful for my ears. But anyway... Especially when he's talking. Especially when he's talking. But I just think, I wish I could create a federation of black people that say, keep our names out of your mouth. Like, yeah. people that are trying to use, like, yeah, racist, yeah. just just don't involve us, right? Yeah. Because I just... Because it's, it gets to the point where it's actually offensive and it's yeah. insulting. Like, you think black Stay people have your nothing lane, better to, to think about than whether someone is getting jabbed because they're racist. Right. Even though... <laughs> I think of just... Um, about 60% of the black population in the UK is unvaccinated. Right. Well, this so is what I'm nobody wondering ever says, how he's right? going to make when that they argument. This is very interesting. It's the same thing here. Yeah. When people criticise the unvaccinated, mm. you know what they're meaning. They're talking about the people that rampage around as the anti-vaxxers, kind yeah. of, you know, disrupting vaccination centres, right? That's yeah. what they're seeing. Mm. They're seeing the likes of Piers Extreme Corbyn. Extreme anti Because what they don't say is, you know... One of the reasons that London is, like, is, is something like a third of people in London are unvaccinated yeah. is because it's got a very big ethnic population. Nation, yeah. And an awful lot of Asian people and black people I'm not are getting, not vaccinated. But they, the, they, they make up the that. majority of people that are unvaccinated. Yeah. So I think, and this is why they're tailoring, the tailoring of their message has to be very careful mm. because, you know, they trotted out like sort of black stars like Idris Elba and all these people yeah, yeah. to try and, you know, encourage um, um, vaccination in black and ethnic minority communities. But it's not really working. No. Right? But they have to be well, very Well, I mean, careful. I don't know much about the black community of London, but yeah. I wouldn't imagine... Well, I mean, he represents Bell Size Park. Yeah. He represents, you know, true, but, but, this, but this is the point. Like, over half of Black people in the country live in London, yeah. and over half of those are unvaccinated. Yeah. So you have to be. But how do you how do you pedal back? Because these are the same people that you let out gather on mass in the tens of thousands yeah. to protest something that didn't happen in the UK right. at the peak of the pandemic when we were all shut down, we were all locked down, and there were no vaccines. There was no partial right. recourse. And the government and the police were, were too scared risk. to stop it by, exactly. because they didn't want to be labelled as racist. But I, I also want to know why Justin Trudeau thinks it's okay to be sweepingly prejudicial and bigoted yeah. towards those that haven't been vaccinated, yeah. whereby, as a bigot, because he's under the new... they must be racist and misogynistic. Because under the rules of the new morality, it's all right to have a go at people. It's a one-way street. Right wing. It's a one-way street. It's fine. You yeah. can do all that. That's yeah, yeah. absolutely no problem yeah. at all. So that type of bigotry is all right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely right. And coming from him... Yeah, he's not, mean, not a hypocrite at all. I mean, he, 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 he really tries. Out. He seems to keep... Well, isn't it cannot... going to be fascinating, the next round of elections across mm. the world, all the, those that will be slung out? I mean, yeah. look at look at France right now. Look at Zemmour. I mean, well, mm. people people think he's kind of like a Trump-like phenomenon and he doesn't have a chance. I kind of think there's kind of like, like Hillary-Trump um, um, parallels that's being drawn there. But all the can all the major candidates for um, re um, election in France are sent right, right of centre. Mm. The left-wing candidates are doing terribly. Well, even Michel Barnier has become a sort of Brexiteer. Yeah, you exactly. Know, he's hilarious. A lifetime <laughs> The EU fighting Brexit. He's now got the other way. He's talking about got, French yeah, independence France. from the EU. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but even the, the, the EU flag down for the Arctic right. right. I know. <laughs> even even the UK is moving more to the right. I mean, like, literally, support for left wing parties in this country is just plummeting. Yeah. If, if, if the Tories. When they, they should be, thank goodness, they're as bad as they are now. Right. Because really, they, they don't have any significant opposition. I mean, if the Lib Dems still existed as, as a, you know, reputable force... But the Lib Dems force, always do what they always do. Yeah, exactly. They win a couple of by-elections. But, they, they, but they could, they, this could have been a fantastic moment for them. Right. That's it. Yeah. This could have been a fantastic moment for them. But yeah, but, but, but we're I think this up in is another really coalition the true red wave. Aren't we? Yeah, but yeah. I mean, Lib Dems haven't got enough people to make a coalition government. Look at the US. 
I mean, people. Uh, Biden's going to get right smashed this year. Yeah. Oh, it's, I, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Like, and the, the, it's this well, so desperate. Biden now the most unpopular president of all time? And, and Kamala Harris Kam definitely the Kamala most Harris unpopular vice president. Uh -huh. I mean, it's so bad that really the only reason why Kamala Harris was made vi vice president, they're actually shielding her and hiding her from the media yeah. because th she actually makes things worse. Yeah. I mean, she was voted in for They liked it better when woman. she said nothing. Yeah. I know, yeah. As soon as exactly. started opening her mouth, he got a lot worse. Can I just plug yeah. a piece that Douglas Murray did for yes. him, if you saw it for The Spectator, yeah. where he dissects that over, yeah. in a podcast, actually, over about 10 or 15 minutes. Mm. It's absolutely fantastic. No, it's well, um, Kamala on. Harris. Yeah. 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 I think I watched something about, as well on The Telegraph, um, and just the fact that she's just annoying. Yeah. She's just irri irritating and Great disingenuous. Laugh, and, oh, God. Yeah. And, yeah. Apparently, she's black parties. as well, which is new to me. Yeah, well, to me. here's your third uh, My your third, third nominee. is the honor system. The honor system is a good um, one. I like and it's, I think it's very, very fitting because there's so many people. Right, okay. I, I recognize that some people being honored will always be controversial, right? Mm. Any politician that's honored will be controversial. And I suspect that if certain people were still alive, this individual wouldn't have been honored. But Tony Blair? I know, honestly. Tony Blair. Sir. I think I just do well, it. Well, there's the a petition, isn't I there? I think as, there we, is. as we speak, this, it's been signed by 450,000 yeah. people yeah. that he should not get. Which I think means it has to be uh, debated in Parliament, doesn't it? Yeah, I, but I don't think 000. that's yeah. the point. The fact that, I mean, I knew that the honour system was a complete nonsense when <laughs> Lewis Hamilton was nominated and accepted it. A man who doesn't live in the UK, a man who, for as long as I can remember, has never said anything positive about the UK. But at least no. he had lots of practice in terms of going down on the knee to actually receive the knighthood. I know, I, I know. I mean, I just, so I, I knew from that point it was just a joke, but then... Van Tam. Yeah. Jenny Harris, who Jenny presided Harris. over the Jenny Harris. test and trace. Yeah. Tony yeah. Blair. Also yeah. Chris I mean, Whitty. I mean, these are all people who have got things massively wrong. Yeah. And everyone that I've argued with about this has said, oh, but they've done their best. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, but no, we don't they've know done two this. things. But they've done two things. They've done their job. This. That's it. They've yeah. done and their job. Well, they've done, a, well, well, they've done a job. Yeah. yeah. Right? yeah. But I'm not sure that they've done the yeah, job they've particularly wrong. well. Well, I think yeah. I tweeted the other day. And if you are, on the one hand, saying, and I'm not one of them that pumps this particular statistic, because I'm not sure that all these people have actually died of COVID. But if yeah, 150,000 people have died yeah. because of a disease that we were supposed to be stopping because of the help with the medical experts, they haven't done a very good job there, have they? Yeah. 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 But this is the thing. The public inquiry hasn't come out regarding the handling of COVID. So no. One, Should this is absolutely wait? premature. But two, it's a bit insulting, mm. right? They didn't do this for free. They've, all, they've already had like sort of drips of scandals about sort of the PPE contracts. Which he's on like 220,000 a year. Exactly. He makes more than the Prime Minister. Yeah. But so, Witty, Van Tam, Harris, yeah. Valance, they've all been wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, monumentally, yeah. constantly. And actually, wrong. in some instances, totally. deliberately wrong. Yeah. You know, in the sense that they have withheld Excuse. information. Mm. Yeah. They've shown graphs that didn't include other bits of the graph that would have showed it yeah. in a different they've light. They've allowed Sage now, you only might to say that that is selective. You might call it selective editing. Yeah. I call it making a, a statement which is deliberately misleading. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think you knight people like that, do you? Yeah. Yeah. No, you As do. for Tony um, Blair, I mean, it's just very wrong, I think, for Boris Johnson to let something like that happen at this particular moment I in history. Think, I, I was it's already taken this. ages for Blair to get anywhere near this. Yeah. So I don't know what's changed. Maybe well, he because left Philip office, died. what, 13 years ago? Yeah, yeah maybe years because ago. Philip yeah. died. I don't know. I, I genuinely, I refuse to believe that the Queen was in her, like, in minding her business, in her bed, eating... Um, Crackers, and, yeah, race. exactly. Yeah. And just thought, you know what? I think I will give Tony Blair the highest honour. Yeah. So can I be slightly controversial? I refuse to believe do, that. do you not think there's an argument that every prime minister, no matter what, because they became prime minister and were in power in mm. office, should get an honour? No. No. I don't think so. <laughs> Absolutely I don't think not. So. I mean, I'm to be sorry. honest, I would do away with the whole lot anyway. I yeah. just do away with it. I, and this is the thing. This is not. I don't think because I don't want there to be confusion saying, "Oh, we just hate Tony Blair." I can recognize he's a remarkable politician. I can absolutely recognize, yeah. and I can rec I can recognize the things that he did that are positive. But I'm sorry, the oh, the negative. First of all, overwhelmingly, like <laughs> it's just it's it's so. Well, even it, if it, you just went with some public opinion, yeah, you didn't have to say that. That's the main thing, and that's yeah. not the main reason. Hmm. But if there was a if there was a vote. I suspect he would not get it. Yeah, no, but you know? I, I don't think and, it should have been that. I, think I just we think were, it's... If we were given the choice, so do you give an honour to Lewis Hamilton, who's a tax exile? He just doesn't live in the UK. Um, I mean, what, what are we talking yeah, about? Or yeah. Chris Whitty, who's been wrong, as we've said. Yeah. Or the guy, who was that guy, and uh, forgive me, I've forgotten his name, but the guy that jumped in the Thames to save someone and drowned. Oh, yeah. Him. yeah the why, why did well, he of course you don't remember his name. Well, you know, and I, but that's the problem. He has a Nigerian name. No, but he did do what he did. Yeah, he did do what he did. So why does he not get a posthumous honour instead of Chris Whitty getting something? Well, I mean, this is why the whole thing is such a nonsense. I mean, the next thing you know, Matt Hancock is going to be honoured soon. Well, they probably give himself an honour. And then he'll tweet out. 
now. Ooh, order, I've just been given a knighthood. The yeah. order of the what? And they'll I have wonder. to go, because he seems to think that if he writes something on Twitter, it comes true. Yeah. But of course, it look doesn't. what happened with the African job. Oh, I they know. Apparently David Beckham's UN still job. pretty miffed. So David yeah. Beckham is probably well, long over Yeah, I feel like long he's, he's, I think not, he's not, it's not no. trolling no. him. Well, especially now, I mean, in my view, the fact mm. that he's another hypocrite, isn't he, in terms of his ambassadorship in Qatar, uh, which is, you know, not exactly yeah, the most I mean, liberal regime. Hypocrisy, I'm afraid, uh, Russell, is not an impediment to getting in on it. <laughs> Clearly not. I'm but sorry to break it. It would be interesting to see with Qatar and with the Beijing Olympics coming up, it's going to be very interesting to see how many of these so-called enlightened football players are going to actually speak out and do something about it. Well, I'll give you a nice round deals. number for that. Zero. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> now, exactly. um, we're nearly out of time, so I'm going to rush through my final nominee, and it is, I'm very pleased to say, The Guardian. Okay. Um, and I could have all sorts of reasons for it, but I haven't got time to <laughs> explain Talking of tax them. exiles. But yeah. Talking of uh, tax exiles. Talking of, yeah, this is an organisation that runs as a trust, right? Mm -hmm. Charitable trust yeah. doesn't pay any taxes, you know? So they're very good at being virtue signalers about everybody else who's rich and horrible, right? These are the same people um, who decided to do a poll for the person of the year. Okay. Right, because they wanted to find who their readers and who people generally online wanted to see as the person of the year. However, they became very alarmed when halfway through the polls' kind of running time, mm -hmm. it became clear that J.K. Rowling was in the lead. Oh, and that my lots God. and lots of people were voting for J.K. Rowling just to stick two fingers up to The Guardian yeah. because they didn't know what to do with it. And you know what they did? They pulled the poll. Pulled the poll. Yeah, they that's democratic, isn't it? The the poll. Poll. That's democratic. Why did they have her on there, though, if they didn't want her? The, well, I think they didn't shoot. have nominees. I think they had you people could nominate just nominating Trump anyone. Ah, but so loads okay. and loads of people just started nominating J.K. Rowling, and it kind of took off, and it's it kind became of a, a thing. You know what? God bless moment, the United Kingdom I know. for our ability to troll. It's, it's the kind of thing we that gives you hope. We are a meme culture extraordinaire. I mean, it's like whenever they used to do polls at Talk Sport. You know, and they would always get jumped on and yeah. fixed by whichever Arsenal, it was either Arsenal <laughs> fans or yeah, yeah, Tottenham yeah. fans, or Hold you know, in. should Sir Alex Ferguson be fired? All the Arsenal fans would vote yes, yeah. and then they'd win the poll. But yeah. I mean, I take my hat off to, as you say, the British public. But the Guardian, mm. I mean, talk about Lily Livered. Yeah. Why didn't they just say, well, J.K. Rowling has been been nominated and yeah. has won, and then create a the debate person around of it. the year? Yeah, yeah, yeah create a debate. You know, uh, there is no one I admire more at this point than J.K. Rowling mm. because it. I mean, the, granted, being she has had to put up tens some of millions does. Have help. Terren yeah, it does. It does help. I'm not saying it does. <laughs> However, I appreciate her conviction. Mm. I mean, there was a story of like this this uh, trans girl, so effectively a biological boy, that wasn't allowed to go to a girl's school because right. it's a girl's school. Right. Uh, he's not a girl. Right. Anyway, and there were people um, online saying that's not fair, that's discrimination. I was like, I went to a girl's school. Ew. Why yeah. would I want a guy there? Right. That's bloody well, that's, weird. That's the thing. I mean, and, and the I went argument, to a boarding school. But also, as well. the argument is so ridiculous mm. anyway that nobody can make any sense of it. But, of course, but, yeah. And talk radio have been embroiled in this over the last few days. Well, James Max. I mean, there were a lot of people asking me, urging me, in fact, to nominate James Max. Well, I was going to. Week. I was going but to. But I eschewed that particular option because it's the start of the year and we don't want to kick off too hard. Uh, so, anyway, here we are. We are okay. now stuck with uh, trying to pick who will win Plank of the Week. Why don't you tell Esther what your three nominees are? She'll pick one. OK, my three were the constant irritant that is Sadiq Khan. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> NHS senior management and Justin <laughs> Trudeau. Uh, it has to be Trudeau. I think he's just a, a very good he's choice. just an utter moron. <laughs> yeah. He's just I an think utter moron. That is a great choice. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. so, do I tell you mine? So you tell me yours. So mine are the taxi the taxi driver. Yes. Um, the the, <laughs> cool the flag bearer for COVID hysteria. Yes. In the UK, um, Nicholas Sturgeon and yeah. the honour system. I think it has to be the honest system. Yeah, it has to be. Doesn't it? Yeah. Those are two good ones, actually. I know. Right, so you get to choose mine. So I've got Mark Drakeford, yeah. Civil Service, and The Guardian. So I'm loving The Guardian, actually, because it's like so Guardian. wonderfully hypocritical. Yeah, it is. it's brilliant. And, and it just sums up the left-leaning, woke kind of oh, Lily oh, Lipper Guardian. Oh, God, it's, it's gone the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, catch me, dude. Cancel it. Cancel it. Yeah. 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 Just so kill my, it. I, 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 I choose Half the Guardian. readership would have a stroke if she actually won it. Yeah, yeah can you imagine? Well. The Guardian. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And let's hope if they win that some, a load of Guardian journalists pile in on us and we can have a little bit of fun. Oh, well, they do that all the time anyway. I mean, I've got one that's always trolling me. I mean, he keeps sort of asking me some really stupid questions, which I just kind of bat back. And in the end, he gives up. <laughs> no, it's ridiculous. He um, picks a fight with mostly the wrong about cycling. Guy. Um, right, so the Guardian, Justin Trudeau, and the Honor System. That's yes. a nice start, that nice. I know. Yeah. First one of the year. What yeah. do you think? They're all fresh new ones as well, aren't they? Yeah. What are you thinking? <sighs> I think Justin Trudeau. I was thinking Justin kind of Trudeau as well. Quite, I mean, well, that is well, I've such got to go an along with that, as it was mine, I suppose. But yeah. I'm quite liking the Honor System. I must yeah. admit. But, um, Especially for Lewis Hamilton. I don't think I'll ever get over yeah, that. Yeah, maybe the Honor System is a bit more relevant for Britain, I suppose, isn't it? And it's timely. Yeah. 
All right, yeah, Trudeau will, always, Trudeau will come back. So we can give Trudeau number two. Yeah, he'll, yeah, always, yeah. Come, he'll always be in there. He won't be, ash- he won't be ashamed of that. So, <laughs> so the honor system one, Justin Trudeau two, Guardian three. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Seems like a good plan. Such a good list. Sounds fair. Good yeah. stuff. Well, listen, Russell, great to see you. Esther as well. Thank, Thank you very you much very indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you for finally pronouncing your name right. I know. You know. I, it really doesn't bother me, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bothered. Call her whatever you want. I Just know. call her Esther. She's the only yeah. Esther that we know. Uh, so, well done. Uh, the honors system, nominating and making. Uh, sir Tony Blair, a sir. Sir Chris Whitty, a sir. Uh, and Dame Jenny Harries, a dame. And not forgetting the other bloke. What was his name? Van Tam. Uh, no, yeah. Frank, Frank John, Atherton. Van Tam. Oh, and Frank, Frank Atherton as well. Yeah, the yeah, other the Plank of the Week, first one of the year. We'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.